And if we now click the lanyard there to get it out of its cradle, pull that down, lanyard then comes forward, and then we can tie it up to have a look underneath. And there we have the configuration underneath, the standard IF. It's a 6 meg IF instead of a 10.7 meg IF, as this is an H-band Vanguard. So I require 23.6 meg crystals plus 6 megs, 29.6, to get it on to 10 meters. There is the RF front end. And you can see that the multiplier there is missing because it's a fundamental on the crystal. Uh, does not need to multiply up. There is the bottom of the LEDX switch with the variable capacitors on the right for the six transmit channels and the variable inductors on the left for the six receive channels, which are to be tweaked very carefully indeed, very carefully indeed. If we now look at the PA section here, you can see that the PA is well covered by this screen and a very important danger warning notice, do not get your fingers in here. Now, there's a bit of HT about there, produced by the inverter. Bottom here of the board. There is relay switching and the high-low power switch that is just there. High-low power tuning switch. So I'll we'll drop the Vanguard back down now. Into its uh, belly. Put those two boards back there. A good look at the back. An old Newmarket 4NKT404 transistors hiding down there. And that is a tour of a Pi H band B100 FM Vanguard, which will one day be on 10 meters. So on this very sunny evening at Beaudley in Worcestershire, this is GADPR Dave Hicks reporting. Pi Telecoms and Radio Telephone Museums of Great Britain in North Worcestershire. See you.